Now friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. Today we're going to conclude our Halo technology analysis series. We spent the last two episodes looking at how realistic the different components in the Mjolnir armor suit are. And then you create a kind of composite material that has the strength of titanium, but also the flexibility of the other material you're mixing it with. Although in recent years we are getting closer and closer to creating a working fusion reactor. As a matter of fact, UK-based Tokamak Energy reportedly heated hydrogen plasma to 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. We found out that not only is the suit quite believable, but we're also in the process of developing many of the technologies in it. Since we already focused extensively on the armored suits, we now want to focus our attention on the Spartans themselves. These weren't just ordinary soldiers in a super suit, these were super soldiers in a super suit. For the purposes of this video, we're going to be focusing mainly on the Spartan 2 project. The Spartan 2 program was initially started as a response to a growing insurrectionist movement started by human colonies that no longer wanted to be governed by the United Earth government. The UNSC was concerned that this battle between the insurrectionists and Earth would lead to an all-out civil war between the inner and outer colonies. Dr. Katherine Halsey of the ONI Special Projects Division led a super soldier program that was focused on creating an elite unit that could quickly pacify the insurrectionist factions and prevent them from spreading. The program would become known as the Spartan 2 Initiative, which would base a lot of its knowledge from previous research and training done by other special forces organizations. Dr. Halsey's own plan would also include a lot of bio-augmentation. One of the most controversial parts of this program was that individuals selected all had to be quite young, around six years in age. 150 children were chosen based on DNA information that had been gathered by the CA's vaccination program. In order to maintain the program's secrecy, the children were kidnapped and replaced with flash clones who would die shortly after, which still isn't a reason for you not to get your kids vaccinated. Having your kids get kidnapped by the government and then replaced by clones so that they can become super soldiers is just a risk that we all have to take. Anyway, these children were selected for their genetic profile and were considerably superior to other children of the same age. Humanity had been bioengineering individuals to help them better adapt to the rigors of space travel for centuries already. But the type of augmentations that the Spartan 2s were about to undergo pushed the limits of scientific knowledge and ethics. The first procedure was known as carbide ceramic ossification. This is where materials were grafted onto the skeletal structure to make a human's bones almost indestructible. Most of these augmentations were incredibly painful. This specific procedure made the subject's bones feel like they were breaking and that their bone marrow was glass that was being shattered. The actual grafting of material wasn't that extensive and only covered around 13% of the bone mass in order to prevent massive white blood necrosis. Now in our own world, bone grafting is a relatively common procedure that helps increase bone regrowth and repair. Bones will typically grow by themselves, but sometimes they need additional aid. This can come in the form of actual organic material taken from other parts of the skeletal structure in a human body or even synthetic fillers that can also speed up the process. In some cases, even metal rods made out of materials like steel or titanium can help strengthen existing bone structures. The problem with putting metal plates inside your body is that it could actually decrease your bone strength, especially in the locations where your bone is being drilled through in order to add on these plates. There's also the risk of the body rejecting the foreign inorganic material. Now, one thing I realized through my research about these types of bioaugmentations is that this field of science and medicine is limited more by ethical concerns rather than by our technology. Our society is generally wary of bioaugmentation, especially because of the type of risks and dangers they might pose on the individuals going through these procedures. Interestingly enough, it was rumored that American soldiers in the latter years of World War II uncovered secret Nazi laboratories where gruesome medical tests were discovered where individuals had portions of their bone structure replaced with metal. There are also widespread reports of Nazis conducting extremely unethical medical procedures on prisoners in concentration camps. But for now, beyond some basic weight training to strengthen the bones, the military has no plan on grafting foreign materials to increase the strength of a soldier's skeleton. For now, the focus is more on creating an exoskeleton. When you increase the strength, density, and weight of your bones, you also have to upgrade other parts of the body. Otherwise, you'll have imbalances and you can potentially hurt yourself. 
For instance, Wolverine's skeletal structure is made out of indestructible metal. This pushes his body weight to over 300 pounds. In order to move that much weight, Wolverine's muscles and ligaments also need to have super strength or else he'll risk tearing things constantly. This is why all Spartans receive muscular enhancement injections. These were protein complexes that were injected into the muscles to increase their density and decrease recovery time. There was a 5% chance that the injections would also lead to a fatal increase in heart size. Protein complexes are a bunch of proteins connected to each other through a stable bond. Proteins play a huge role in our body and help repair and maintain our tissue and muscles. It is possible to create synthetic proteins, but whether one can be created to trigger increased muscle density and decreased recovery time is questionable. You have all different types of protein supplements on the market that claim to do a variety of things, but the science behind them are questionable at best. There are, however, many types of steroids that can increase your muscle mass, bone density, and metabolism. These steroids also come with a slew of side effects ranging from height and aggression, damage to the liver, and even shrinking balls. It should also be added the gains we see from these protein complexes used in the Spartan program were pretty extreme and far beyond anything we have here on Earth. Subjects reported that upon receiving the injections, it felt like napalm was coursing through their skin and they also felt like their veins were pulsating and being torn out of their skin. The entire body also simultaneously felt like it was on fire. The next step in the Spartan 2 program was to inject human growth hormone into the thyroid in order to boost skeletal and muscle tissue growth. A rare side effect of this procedure would be elephantiasis and a suppressed sexual drive. The thyroid gland is responsible for many things, including producing hormones that regulate the body's metabolic rate, as well as heart and digestive functions, muscle control, brain development, mood, and bone maintenance. Human growth hormone is a naturally occurring substance created by a gland inside of your brain. It helps us grow from childhood through our adolescence and also helps us regulate that growth. It's more famously known for being used by athletes to help them recover from injuries and increase their strength. Because HGH levels decrease with age, the hormone is rumored to also have anti-aging qualities. So there are definitely some benefits from HGH, but it's normally not injected into your thyroid or neck. It's injected into your thigh or your stomach or another more fleshy area. The thyroid injections are followed by a occipital capillary reversal procedure. This procedure increases blood vessel flow beneath the rods underneath a patient's retinas, which increases their vision. If the retina rejects this procedure, this could lead to blindness. We know that increased blood flow for the optical nerves can lead to improved vision. That's why doctors recommend taking breaks from looking at screens for a long period of time and doing basic eye exercises to promote better blood flow. But increased blood flow won't increase a person's vision to superhuman levels. Eagles have around 25 vision, which means that they can see things clearly four to five times further than a human. But this is because their eyes are fundamentally different in structure from ours, and they also have higher concentration of cones and rods in their eyes. So there are some very clear limitations to our eye structure and how good our vision can get. Humans at best can have 20-10 vision. Well, the Spartan twos did come out on the other end as true super soldiers. They were on average around two meters tall and at least 200 pounds in weight. They had increased strength, endurance, and speed. John 117, aka Master Chief, was able to sustain bursts of speeds up to 65.2 miles per hour, but also tore his Achilles tendon in the process. So perhaps not everything in their body had evolved to the same strength level. Spartans also had superb reaction time and could see quite well in the dark. This meant that they could go toe to toe with alien warriors like the elites and even larger hunter species. The toll of the program was immense. Several Spartans washed out due to terrible physical ailments or even death caused by this augmentation process. Out of the 150 children that entered the program, only 33 were able to survive the training and bioengineering. This is probably one of the biggest reasons why we won't see a similar type of bioengineering process here on Earth. Simply put, the risks are way too high and there just are better ways of creating super soldiers that don't involve extremely risky and unknown medical procedures. 
Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed our Halo series. Uh, don't forget to check out the other two videos in the series where we talk about uh, Master Chief's armor. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.